Welcome back. This is the Fabulous Four. I'm Ben Bergstrom. I'm joined by Alec Williams, Scott Franklin, and a very special guest for today, Joey Wagner. Uh, we've got a lot lined up. We've got a Q&A for Mr. Wagner. We've got a good bracket for today. Uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Alec to introduce our guest, Mr. Wagner. Yep, thanks, Ben. Um, our guest today is known by others <laughs> as Mr. Derby. He is going into his 21st Derby, I believe. And is also has been the MC for the U of L basketball team for the last nine seasons. He is the owner of the Jay Wagner Group in Louisville, Kentucky. Let me introduce Joey Wagner to the Fab Four Podcast. How's it going, Joey? Good, man. How you guys doing? Thanks for having me. Good, good Joey. Good. Appreciate for, you being thanks here. Thanks for coming on. Hey, no problem. I know you guys make me feel old calling me Mr. Wagner, though, man. <laughs> I won't call you Mr. Wagner. I'm older. These guys were my students a long time ago, so I don't I, I don't call anybody Mr. unless they're older than me. It's all good. <laughs> all right, who wants to start us off first? I'll go, Alec. I, you right. know, Joey, I've kind of scouted around a little bit and found some things about you. As Alec said, he, you had agreed to come on and talk with us a little bit, and, and I'm a, a justifiable straight up. I'm a Kentucky fan. I've never been to a U of L basketball game ever. I've been to some football games, and I really like going to those. Uh, and I've been to baseball, but I've never been to a basketball game. And he's explaining to me a little bit about what you do at the games. And, and I kind of Googled up a few things and watched. Explain to folks, because I got a lot of uh, a feeling a lot of people don't know exactly what being an MC at the Louisville games really is. So give us your take on what you do at the Louisville games. Yeah, um, about nine years ago, uh, the athletic department, who I, I had a good relationship with, I did a lot of work with them through our marketing and event company. Um, they kind of said when the Yum Center kind of opened up, they wanted to kind of turn up the entertainment value for Louisville games. So they wanted to look at hiring um, an NC for the basketball games, kind of like an NBA arena did. So uh, they hired me to basically be that in-game, I guess you call it crowd MC. So I'm the guy on the microphone that does a lot of the in-game promotions. Um, at the 16 minute, the 12 minute, the eight minute and the four minute timeouts. Uh, and then also if the game's close, they keep my mic um, hot. So I'll get the crowd hype, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then over the years, um, we've added the DJ component, uh, which DJ k Dog is our official DJ for all the football and basketball games. So we'll work with him um, on tossing to him, him playing music, tossing back to me. So we've kind of incorporated this thing for uh, the past nine years of where it just kind of adds a little bit more value for the fans. And it's crazy that I've done it for nine years. Um, it's exciting that it's going to be my 10th season. Um, and I was a part of that national championship team in 2013. So that was fun going down there through Atlanta and getting a ring and, and kind of being a whole part of that uh, team. I don't so remember that. Exciting. <laughs> there, hey, I was there. Ben, I saw it. Oh, nice. Someone had to say it. Ben throwing stones early. <laughs> gracious, man. <laughs> <laughs> so let me get this straight. You got to go to the national championship, all the whole through the NCAA tournament. And you got a ring and the whole nine yards. Yeah, so it was actually pretty cool. I got to go to Madison Square Garden for the uh, Big East tournament that year. The first time I've ever been in MSG, which was really awesome, and saw some unbelievable games. We were down 20-something in the semis and 20-something in the championship game. We came back and won, um, won the Big East tournament. And then two weeks later, you know, we win the uh, NCAA tournament. I was down in Atlanta, and that was in a, probably the best two or three weeks span of my life, just kind of going there and experiencing that as a fan. And, um, you know, and, and seeing that in person was, was pretty awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, all jokes aside, I'm sure that really was a cool experience. And um, honestly, a once-in-a-lifetime kind of thing, being literally being a part of a team that can that can go uh, and accomplish so much. But uh, I know Alec, when he was introducing you, used the phrase Mr. Derby. Can you explain a little bit where that came from and what that means? Yeah, so, um, you know, this September will be my 21st Kentucky Derby. We've kind of been in the mix um, of the Kentucky Derby for that long. You know, it started with me as just kind of like as a party planner, event, pro, event planner, um, doing celebrity events at the Kentucky Derby 20 years ago. Um, and now it's kind of turned into a business for us. We own a company called Derby VIP, uh, which is a high-end concierge service at the Kentucky Derby. We take care of celebrities, professional athletes, high net worth individuals, pretty much anything and everything they need during Kentucky Derby weekend we do. 
um, plus all of our events that we do pretty much Wednesday through Saturday are, are still known to this day um, as some of the biggest events at the Kentucky Derby. So we just kind of have our hand involved um, a, pretty much a lot with the Derby. Churchill Downs is one of our clients. We help them with a lot of things throughout the year, um, help and promote a lot of their events. So it's just been pretty cool that, you know, anytime, um, you know, I travel all over the country and, you know, I tell people I'm from Kentucky, the three things that come up are bourbon, basketball, and the Derby. Uh, and we've got our hand pretty much in, involved in a lot of those things. So, you know, every year, first Saturday of the May, my, my name kind of gets thrown out there around the country when people come into the Derby as, you know, the guy that kind of can help them with anything they need for the Kentucky Derby. So uh, that nickname kind of is kind of stuck over the past 20 years. But, yeah, we love Derby, man. It's, uh, it's going to be weird with it being in September this year. Um, but the good thing about it is as soon as it's over in September, we start planning for another one. Yeah, I'm sure okay, you're excited about uh, allowing the fans, aren't you? Yeah, you know, obviously as an event planner, um, you know, I have my my thoughts about COVID and keeping everybody safe is obviously um, that's our number one concern when you do an event is keeping your people safe. So um, I think knowing Churchill Downs, I think they'll do a great job of keeping everybody safe. But yeah, I mean, obviously I've gone to Derby 20 years in a row. I didn't want to not break a streak and not be able to not go, but I'm glad to see that they are going to have fans. I mean, it's, it's important for our economy. It's important for our state, our city. Uh, you know, the, the Kentucky Derby generates $450 million for the city of Louisville. Uh, so, you know, taking that away would have been a huge blow uh, to the city, but I'm glad to see that they're going to have some fans. All right, Joe, I got to ask, you said it's 20 some years now you've been doing this. You don't look like an, a very old gentleman yet. How do you get involved in this 20 some years ago? Is it a family thing or somebody you know was was involved in things like this as far as the derby's going and how does that transpire no not really I got, got kind of lucky you know I just turned 41 in February uh, I don't look 41 um, no. that's why I said you guys made me feel old when you called me Mr. Wagner <laughs> earlier but um, you know I kind of got lucky you know I, I, I literally um, came back from uh, college I played baseball and golf at Moorhead State University uh, when I moved back from uh, college uh, I literally walked into this um this bar called the blue martini in downtown Louisville and just said, Hey, what's your worst night of the week? And they told me Thursday, four weeks later, we had the line down the block and had a bunch of people in there. And uh, for our first event, we really ever did. And they asked me if I wanted to get involved in some more events. And that like a month later was the Kentucky Derby and I helped them promote some events and a bunch of celebrities and athletes kind of showed up that night and we took good care of them. And it was kind of all she wrote. It was just every single year from there on out, it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, over those past 20 years, we've, we've worked with some of the biggest venues and some of the biggest brands um, so it was kind of one of those things that we literally you know I, I moved back from college and I wanted to do events and uh, we went to and worked with this venue and Derby was literally like a month after I moved home and uh, it's just it's, it, it, it's repeated every single year you know that's a good thing about Derby it's never going to go away it's always the first Saturday of May so it's something that happened every single year and we've always kind of got creative and and done some fun events every year and it's just the brand's gotten bigger and bigger each year. Cool that's awesome. Joey, one of the questions I had is um, you followed me on Instagram a couple of years ago, probably. I didn't really know who you were, but I followed you back and I go through your Instagram feed and it's just celebrities everywhere. You've got anywhere from Luke Combs to Jack Harlow to Dan McDonald, Lamar Jackson, Donovan Mitchell. How do you get in touch with all these people? How do you start that friendship with them? You know, it's, it's different with all of them. Um, you know, the Donovan relationship, who I'm actually, you know, super close with now is, you know, I was, I'm on the board of the Kentucky Derby Festival and his senior year uh, of, um, of high school, I was the chair of the Kentucky Derby Basketball Classic. And basically from the day he showed up, um, that weekend from the practices to the airport, you know, we became really, really close and he, he built a really cool relationship with my son, Jaden. And it's just kind of, you know, just went from there. And we know when he went to play basketball at Louisville, you know, obviously I emceed the games. We still had a good relationship. We kind of became friends. Uh, and it kind of just grew as we did. And he still talks to my son to this day. You know, I go to a lot of his games when he's close or, um, you know, he's within driving distance or sometimes a flight and we stay in touch. And, you know, Lamar, the same thing. You know, I've been involved with the athletic department and the football program and just kind of just getting to know those guys and, um, you know, being involved with some nonprofits and, and foundations that those guys did some work with. But, I mean, it's just kind of all over the place. You know, Derby for me, um, it's big with the celebrities, you know, I became a lot of good friends with a lot of those celebrities. Um, just, they come in every year and I take good care of them when they're here at our events or they need an SUV or they need security or they need tickets that we have and we can help those celebrities get tickets to the track. And it's just kind of building those relationships every single year, man. I, you know, I worked really, really hard to, 
to build those relationships and just take care of those celebrities and athletes when they come in for the derby. And it's just kind of led to those different relationships each, you know, every year it grows, which is pretty, pretty cool. So, so um, go ahead. So at the Derby, I, I, I hear you talk about, obviously I know all kinds of celebrities come to the Derby. Give us some examples of folks that you've dealt with that uh, we'd be amazed that you're dealing with at the Derby, that you're helping with whatever they need in regards to what they're doing before and after the Derby. Or yeah, the so Derby. obviously, you know, just doing this for so long, you've got a lot of friends. I mean, you know, you know Aaron Rodgers, his agent's a really good friend of mine. So when they come in town, we take good care of them. Um, you know, the Bridgmans are a client of ours. So uh, we did Junior Bridgmans event the past couple of years, helping them with logistics and marketing. And, you know, we had Diddy. Diddy was the host of our event a couple of years ago that we helped out with. That was really cool to work with him. Um, but it's just kind of just word of mouth, man. You know, our events are so big. Um, and these guys come in town and they want to know where the parties are at. Or they want to know if they, you know, where to have a good time. And we've always kind of controlled those. But a lot of the NFL guys, um, Von Miller, um, he, he's a good friend of mine now just from him coming in for the Derby. His agent is a, is a buddy of mine. So, you know, a lot of the agents that I've built relationships with over the years, when, when their guys come in town, they just want to make sure, cause you know, we work with a lot of the galas that are in town at the Derby and just to make sure that those people have a great time too as well. But man, you name it from the NBA guys to the NFL guys, to the actors that, you know, they end up coming, uh, you know, through our events at some point, Shaq wow. was a big one that he always comes in. He's good friends of a buddy of mine. Shaq is a big one. <laughs> yeah, he's um, Michael Phelps is another one that's probably pretty big. Michael Jordan, um, you know, the, the, the Williams sisters, Wayne Gretzky, um, you name them. If they've been to the Derby, they've been to one of our events. So that's been pretty cool um, to be a part of. Well, that's great, man. That's awesome. Yeah, you talked a little bit about your uh, relationship with Donovan Mitchell. Can you talk a little bit about um, how you've grown to come close to, like, some of the other basketball players or the, the athletes as a whole and even the coaching staff and athletic department a little bit? Yeah, so obviously with Donovan, um, the best thing about Donovan is that the day I met him his senior year of high school till now, he's never changed. Um, as big as he's gotten as a global superstar, um, he's still the same old Donovan. I mean, I teach now at University of Louisville. I teach event planning. Um, so he actually um, came to, you know, came in and did a Zoom for my class last semester in partnership with Adidas and UofL. And that was really, really cool. And he gifted all of the students an autographed pair of his um, um, Donovan Mitchell shoes. And, you know, it's just building the trust with those guys. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't I don't need anything from them. I don't want anything from them. It's just, you know, it's just more of just building that friendship. Um, obviously, um, you know, through the University of Louisville relationship, getting to work in the athletic department, working with them. Um, through some agencies I've been involved with, my own company. Um, I have a master's degree in sports marketing, so I love that side of the business um, that we do. So I get to do a lot of things with the University of Louisville. So getting to work on, you know, like Louisville Live, and I've got to, you know, I got to work on Lamar Jackson's Heisman campaign. So getting to do some of those things has been awesome. And then obviously my relationship with the coaches. Um, I'm on the board of directors of Coach Mack's Family Foundation, which is the Mack Family Foundation. So I've built a really, really good relationship with Coach Mack and his wife, Christy, and that's been an awesome um, you know, a thing to be a part of. When Coach Petrino was here, I was on the board of his um, family foundation. And then obviously when Coach Satterfield got here, just kind of getting to know those guys and him knowing that we kind of did a lot of things in the community and, and, and work, getting to work with them has been great. And then obviously, you know, having the relationship with the guys, um, the players as me emceeing the games and, you know, and getting to know those guys that, you know, kind of after basketball uh, and that, that stayed here, like Luke Hancock and, and those here in Louisville, just building a relationship with them. Pretty fun to do. All right. We're glad to be joined by our co-host, Todd Polston. Todd, how's it going? You're a little late to the party. Doing good, guys. What's up, Todd? Hey, guys. What's up, man? All right, Joey, I was gonna, I'll was i go ahead and go. Um, in your nine years, almost ten years in UofL, what's your best memory besides the 2013 national title that you've had with UofL Athletics? Oh, man, that's a good question. Uh, Sugar Bowl, that trip was amazing. I definitely have to thank that game, um, you know, because no one thought we were going to win that game. And then we literally just punched them in the mouth in that first quarter. That was awesome. Uh, I think the, you know, Florida State game, which was the Muhammad Ali game, which Muhammad Ali was one of our biggest clients. So we got to work with Muhammad a lot. Uh, I thought that game was pretty special because that was another game that college game day was here. And 
Uh, no one thought we were going to win that game. And Lamar Jackson kind of just took over the world in that game. That was a pretty special game. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, just those two big football games, all the bowl trips are fun. And then, obviously, like you said, the national championship, that was probably been the, uh, the top memories. And then I think the, the thing outside of an, uh, you know, a game was helping out with Lamar's Heisman campaign. That was really, 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 really cool. And to see him win was awesome. Um, but, yeah, a lot of great memories, man, over the past uh, nine, ten years. Hey, Joey, what, what, lifelong U of L fan growing no. up? Is, you, no, that's what I mean. No, not actually. Um, I grew up kind of a Kentucky fan. Um, my mom and my dad are season ticket holders at UK football and basketball for 30 years. Um, you know, I, I've never had the like the hate UK um, yeah. or hate Louisville. Uh, it's always kind of been divided. I've had friends that played for Louisville, friends that played for Kentucky. I mean, I have a lot of great friends that played at Kentucky. Derek Anderson's a good buddy of mine, Ron Mercer, Tony. Delk, Anthony Epps, Scott Pageant. Me and Scott grew up down the street from each other. So I kind of had a lot of love for those guys cool. growing up and Walter McCarty, all those guys, because we've been friends since college. And um, But then I uh, moved back to Louisville, had a lot more friends play for Louisville a lot more. So it kind of got me cheering Louisville on a little bit more. And then my wife, she actually was a cheerleader at University of Louisville. So when she uh, was cheering, I was at a lot of the games. And that kind of got me officially switched uh, when I married a U of L cheerleader. So uh, full fledged <laughs> Louisville fan now. That, that'll do it. That, that'll do it for sure. <laughs> Todd, you got a question for Wag Mr. Wagner? I do not yet. You don't have one yet? All right. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I don't. All right, Joey, I'll go ahead. Um, with the Derby being moved back to September, um, how's that affecting all your parties that you have during Derby week? Are you still going to get to have them? Yeah, that's a great question. We actually uh, went over all that today. Um, with the University of Louisville moving their football game from Thursday to Wednesday, uh, that put a huge wrench in our system because mm -hmm. on Wednesday of Derby Week, we do an event called Jock Tales, which is probably the biggest event of the Derby Week. Um, it's where all the uh, Kentucky Derby jockeys bartend for charity. So we had to move that event from Wednesday to Tuesday night, um, which I don't love, uh, but it is what it is. I didn't want to compete with the U of L football game, um, which we all know that, you know, that's still up in the air if they're going to be able to have fans at the football game. So, um, yeah, so we'll do Jock Tales on Tuesday. Um, we'll go to the U of L football game on Wednesday. On Thursday, we're doing an event at an, uh, a bar in town called Ainsworth. It's getting ready to open up in August. We have one of the top DJs in the world, uh, DJ Vice, coming in. And then our kind of our Friday and Saturday are kind of still up in the air. Um, you know, with me being in the event business and all this COVID stuff, there's just so much uncertainty right now for the event planners and for people to do events because, you know, the governor just came out last week that you can do 50% capacity of venues and there's just a lot of strict laws and rules. And, you know, we're really looking at our next six months of, you know, is it really worth us to do events? So um, it will definitely change the landscape of Derby for sure. We just don't know how many people are going to be allowed um, in our events right now. Um, you know, the good thing is it is, is the end of June. So we have a few months to kind of see what happens with COVID and, you know, the cases, if they go up, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, it's definitely going to change us, but you know, it's going to be Derby week. I think people have kind of been caged in and ready to party and have some fun. So, uh, I think they'll be ready to go out Derby week for sure. I've got, I've got one. Um, so being an MC, you, uh, you have to make, you remain somewhat professional, I guess, but still be an entertainer. How often do you find yourself getting caught up in like in the game? Do you ever, do you ever get overly emotional during the game? And then kind of have to calm yourself down during those TV timeouts when, you, when you're going on the big screen? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of, you know, like the media, I'm not really a media member. The media is not allowed to cheer. Um, you know, I can cheer, you know, for the guys. I'm, I'm kind of in the tunnel. I'm kind of like sunk in where people can't really hear me in between my promotions. So, um, you know, I, I get to cheer a little bit. Um, and then obviously when, you know, the game's close, I'm, I'm literally out there and, and on the camera cheering the guys on and getting the crowd hyped and stuff like that. So, you know, I don't, I don't do overly cheer because obviously I am down there um, on the floor, you know, watching the game. But, you know, I do catch myself sometimes when we go on a big run or, you know, maybe a big dunk or something like that, you know, cheering or clapping or, or whatever. But, yeah, you know, obviously I got to respect the game and respect my job. But, yeah, I definitely um, try to, you know, keep it as cool as I can. All right, I'll go. Um, yeah, I can go. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, going back to your Instagram post, I seen a couple year. I guess it's a couple years ago now, when Duke played at U of L, and a heartbreaking loss we had and whatever. But actually, you got to meet Coach K after the game, correct? Yeah, I did. How was that experience? You know, it was actually really cool. My son, Jaden, he's 13 now. 
And, you know, obviously these young kids, you know, before, you know, Zion was at Duke, he's, you know, oh my gosh, dad, have you seen this Zion Williamson kid dunking on overtime and all these crazy. So my son had been following Zion since he was in high school. And so my son wanted to meet Zion after the game. And normally, you know, I, I wouldn't do things like that. But when you have kids, you know, you never try to use favors or, or wait around. But when you have kids, it's a little bit different. You want to, you know, keep them happy and get them to have the perks of dad having his cool job. Um, but, you know, we were sitting there and actually um, uh, Nolan uh, Smith, Derek Smith's son, me and Nolan had actually became friends, um, you know, just through when he was living here in Louisville or coming back to Louisville or coming in for the Derby. And I was actually waiting outside the tunnel to talk to Nolan after the game. And uh, me and my son were sitting there waiting for Nolan and Zion walked out. So Jaden asked me if he could have a picture and, and, and Zion was super nice and took a picture with Jaden. And then Coach K walked out and um, he kind of like played a joke with Jaden. He was like, he said, hey, son, he's like, would you, uh, you want to take a picture with me? And Jaden was kind of like starstruck because it's Coach K, you know. Uh, and, and he was like, sure, you know, and, and I think he kind of saw the defeat in my eyes and then the defeat in Jaden's eyes that we had just lost this game that we should have never lost ever. Um, and that was actually a really, really cool moment. I mean, Coach K was so respectful and so nice. And, you know, obviously me being a sports fan, it was a cool, you know, sports fan moment, but it was also a cool dad moment that, you know, he took the time to see two Louisville fans kind of defeated because, you know, obviously my son seeing Coach K, his eyes lit up, and that was actually a really, really cool moment. Yeah, great story. Uh, Joey, I got one last question for me. The football season, which we hope happens and we get to watch, University of Louisville, Coach Satterfield, second season. How many games does he win? I think he overachieved last year, me personally. How many games will he win, and can they beat the Cats down there in Louisville? Man, I if I had to if I had to guess, I think nine or ten games. I think they got a really really good team this year. The best thing I love about Coach Sat is the culture in that program right now is unbelievable. Like I'm friends with a lot of those coaches, and those coaches just love on those kids, man. It's just it's an amazing culture in there, and um, you know just, just talking to a lot of those guys that I'm friends with, and you know, seeing how the players are, you know, kind of adapting to Coach Satterfield's system, it's pretty amazing. And, you know, obviously, I have to say, yes, we're going to beat Louisville at home. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, last year's game, I was at that game, and it was miserable because it was pouring down rain. It was rain. a great game. It was, it was a great awesome. game. Man, we got our butt whooped in the rain. But, uh, you know, I think he's, um, he's doing a great job, man. I mean, um, you know, yeah, I think he surprised a lot of people last year. But, I mean, obviously, he's very, very respected across the country as a head coach. And, uh, just getting to know him as a person and, you know, and, and becoming friends with him now. I've seen what he's done with that program. It's been pretty uh, special to see. But, you know, I think that they're going to be back to, you know, and seeing the recruiting class he's got coming in right now, I think, you know, Absolutely. they'll be competing with the Clemsons um, again here soon, hopefully. Well, I, I think that they're in a good uh, situation there in the conference because they recruit pretty well. They've always got they've always got skilled players. It just seems to me if they can upgrade their offensive and defensive line, they'll definitely compete in the ACC. Maybe not with Clemson, but everybody else is fair game, I think. For sure. All right, any other questions for Joey before we move on? Let's get to this bracket, Alec. I'm ready to tell you right. who the best Louisville people are. You think <laughs> I haven't right. been paying attention. I'm old, man. I know these guys. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our Sweet 16 for the day. And it is best player in UofL basketball history. So let's go ahead and get started with our first matchup. It is the one seed, Daryl Griffith, against the 16 seed, Terrence Williams. Griff. Ben, you want to start us off? <laughs> I abstain. I abstain from voting. I don't, I don't know. I, I literally have no clue. Ben, do you know who either, either one of these guys are? Say the names again, Alec. Daryl Griffith and Terrence Williams. T. Will. No. Nope. I guess we'll go with the one seed. I guess we'll go one seed. <laughs> Did not think it was going to start like this. <laughs> Scott, hey, Joey's already. No, nah, Joey's already voted. He knows the answer. Easy. Todd. Griffith. It's easy. All right. It's Even though Griffith. I think I think you know I think T. Will kind of got screwed here a little bit. It's pretty good say, player to be the 16. I, I agree, really Polson. believe – I mean, is Tom George doing these daggone brackets every week, Alec? Can we get something better? <laughs> T. Will gets a 16 seed? 
Yeah, he does. You got Luke. You got Luke Hancock ahead of him. What in the world's going on? I don't know. All right, the eight seed Rodney McRae against the nine seed Peyton Siva. Man, Joey, you want to start us off? I'm gonna go with Peyton. I talked to Peyton last night. He just won the championship over there overseas where he's playing at right now. So I got to go with my man Peyton. I'm I'm gonna shock the world and go with Peyton Siva. Scott, I'm old, and I think Rodney McRae is one of the greatest Louisville Cardinals of all time. Multi-dimensional for his size, tremendous player, a winner, Rodney McRae for me. Ben, I'm young, and I'm going Peyton Seaver. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go Seaver too. <laughs> all right, uh, Ben, I think you should know these two guys. The five seed Russ Smith against the twelve seed Gorgie D- Jane. Who? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Man, that one's tough for me. Those are two amazing guys, but obviously, looking at a score, I got to go with Russ. Yeah. Todd, I'm a hundred percent going with Russ Smith because here's why: I spent one night at Four Street. Well, multiple nights at Four Street, but one <laughs> night I was at Four Street. He was there, and I think. I think Luke might have been there. Not sure who the other one was. Might have been Dom and somebody. Or uh, no, no, who was the uh, Shane Behan was the other one that was there. <laughs> and I watched Russ Smith chug the biggest bottle of <laughs> champagne. What, I'm not sure what it was. But it was the most impressive thing I've ever seen. Everybody went crazy. So I'm going Russ Smith. Russ would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> Scott. <laughs> I agree with Todd. Whether he can drink a bottle of champagne that fast or not, I got to go with Russ Smith. Really enjoyed watching him play, by the way. Great yeah. player. Ben? I got to go Russ Smith. He was always right. – he was a pickpocketer. It would, it would always make me – it would make me so frustrated watching him play defense and he'd, he'd steal the ball. He's one of those guys that you want on your team. Yeah. I hope he gets back in the NBA. I think he can play in the he, NBA. He Somebody give him a better chance. I agree. All right, the four seed, Purvis Ellison against the 13 seed, Francisco Garcia. I got to go never nervous, Purvis. Absolutely. Todd. I think this is another tough one. I think, you know, Francisco is one of the greatest to me growing up. Was He's yeah. one of the guys I remember being, you know, one of the best Louisville players I saw. Of course, I'm young. Um, but I, I got to go with a guy named Purvis. I mean – we coach with a guy named Purvis. He has 47 knee braces. So, I got to go with, with Purvis. <laughs> Nowhere near Kingdom. <laughs> yeah, <by the> way. <laughs> Frank. Oh, this is easy for me, Alec. Never nervous Purvis Ellison, NCAA champion. He swatted everything. He's like Anthony Davis, except he played for Louisville. Now, I ain't saying he's as good as Anthony Davis, but when he played for Louisville as a freshman, that guy was awesome. And they beat Duke, another plus. Uh, so I got to go with Never Nervous Purvis. And I got a picture with him down on Fourth Street. There's my Fourth Street uh, story, wow. Toddy. <laughs> his hand went all the way down to my elbow. That's the biggest guy I've ever seen. He's wonderful. He was a very nice guy. Ben. Uh, Purvis, because he has a cooler name. Even though they both have cool names. <laughs> All right, the sixteen or the six seed Montrez Harrell against the eleven seed Dewan Wheat. Man, that is probably the Ooh. hardest matchup in this whole entire bracket. When you sent that to me earlier, Dewan Wheat's a legend. I mean, he is the legend at University of Louisville. I think he needs. To, I think his jersey needs to be retired. Montrez would probably kill me if, if I didn't vote for him, but. I would have to go with uh, Dewan Wheat, man. He was a he's a Louisville legend. Todd, uh, is uh, Dewan any kin to uh, to uh, what's Wheat's name? Frank from Bardstown? No, no, I don't know that one. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't. I had to do that. No, no. Um, listen, man. As much as I. You know, I don't want to. I don't use the word hate on podcasts as much as I dislike this person as a player. I still respect how great he was. He's been great in the NBA. I got to go with Trez. Frank, a tough one here. This is a tough one. Uh, Montrez Harrell's pretty dang good, and he's turned out to be a pretty dang good pro. Yeah. But if you're asking me about just their Louisville career, man, I love Dewan Wheat. He's from Louisville. 
he's about not very big, frail guy, tough as a pine knot. I'm going with I'm going with Dewan Weed. I really liked him as a player. Ben. Now, I'm a I'm a Joey here. Montrez will kill me if he knows I pick uh, <laughs> whatever. The, but uh, it's uh, for that reason I'm gonna have to go Montrez. Montrez will. Yeah, you got you gotta like Montrez. I gotta take Montrez here. I like him because that poster Willie Cauley Stein put him on. <laughs> Easy now. Easy now. <laughs> All right, the three seed, Donovan Mitchell against the 14 seed, Luke Hancock. God, Donovan, Donovan Mitchell. Mitchell. I'm not even going to discuss it. <laughs> I'm just happy I know both these guys. Out of the way, Ben. Luke. If Luke watches this, he's going to definitely get mad at me, but I got to pick Spider. He knows my relationship yeah. with him. Luke ben. Hancock had a lot of big shots, though. A lot of big shots. Yes, he did. Hancock. Absolutely. You don't win the national championship without Luke. Yep, it's true. All right, the seven seed Terry Rozier against the ten seed Milt Wagner. Man, you know that's a good matchup. I'm not related to Milt Wagner, <laughs> um, but you know I think he was a really, really good player. Once again, old school versus new school, but I would probably say Milt Wagner. Todd, uh, you know I'm to be honest with you. I've, Wagner's the one I. I really don't know much about, I, I think. I'm not really sure what his – I'm sure Frank will tell me his accolades here in a second. but I um, will. I'm going to go with Terry Rozier for the simple fact is I think he's a pretty daggone good basketball player. Yeah, let, I let me, At college and NBA. Yeah. Let me help you with this one, Ben. You ready? Milt Ice Wagner, greatest player in the 80s for me, watching him play on the – front of the 2-2-1 two, two, press from Denny Crum. UCLA cut. He catches on the post. Could shoot it. His son's Dewan Wagner. Come on, man. Milt Wagner. By the way, Dewan's kid's going to go to Kentucky, though. It's going to be yes, great. I'm telling you. But that's that's Milt Wagner, man. He's great. All right. And Terry Rozier. Oh, his, name, his nickname's <laughs> Ice. They just don't call you Ice if you're not great. <laughs> Terry Rozier. I don't even remember him playing. <laughs> I'm just I'm going to have to go milk. I got to go milk. It was – Thankfully. I don't know a lot about him, but from what I know of him, he's a pretty good basketball player when he played at U of L. When you get off here, call Coach Gum, Alex, so he can explain to you who Milt Wagner <laughs> was, okay? Don't call Coach Gum. Call yeah. Coach Gum. He'll tell you everything about it. All right, last matchup of the first round. Wes Unsell, Reese Gaines. Wes Unsell, one of the greatest Cardinals ever. Todd. I'm going with the Dixie Chicks. Oh, I'm sorry. The Chicks. The yeah, Chicks. Say, I'm, going, I'm going West. I'm just kidding. I had to throw that in there. I'm going West. For sure, no doubt. Obviously, I know him, one of the greatest Louisville Cardinals of all time. Yeah. Frank? Uh, Wes Unsailed. Ben? Wes. All right. <laughs> all right, let's, let's move through here quickly. Uh, Daryl Griffith and Peyton Siva. Daryl Griffith. Is anybody going to disagree with that? No. Peyton uh, Siva does not shock the world tonight. I'm going with Dr. Duncanstein once again. Yeah. Yep. Um, Russ Smith, Purvis Ellison. Ooh. Man, that's a tough one. I'm going to go with my man Russ. Ooh. Todd. Again, I'm going to follow this up by saying I watched him drink the biggest bottle of whatever that was I've ever seen. So, I'm going Russ Smith again to the dislike of Frank because I know he's not going you with You can't those. go wrong with either one of those answers. No. I'm Scott. going with na- I'm going with the national champion, greatest freshman ever for Louisville as far as a freshman year, never nervous Purvis Ellison. <laughs> Ben, I'm not sure you can hear us. I think Ben, ben failed. Died. Who, who is it again? Russ Smith, Purvis Ellison. And Fred Purvis. Uh, Fred Purvis, always. <laughs> Good call. Put it on Alec. I'm taking Russ Smith. I like Todd's oh, story. What a young blood. Oh, oh. You who can't go wrong Russ either Smith? way. 
You can. Oh yes, you can. Yes, you can, <laughs> Alec. I got his jersey sitting right back there in that back wall on that back wall. I somewhere. don't care. What does that mean? We're talking about the best player at your university. I I don't disagree I'm with. I'm gonna send you that. I'm gonna send you that picture of me and Purvis when I get off here, so you can see how big he is. All right. Dag, he beat he beat Duke in a championship game. <laughs> Broke All the right. necks. Montrez and Donovan Mitchell. Who are you taking? Oh, wow. Todd? Oh, what did Joey say? Did he go yet? Yeah, Donovan. He Donovan. Yeah. He go Donovan. Um, I want to go Donovan too, man. I think he's a, I think he's a great, great, great player, great pro. Scott? I'm going Donovan Mitchell. I really like the way he plays. He's one of my favorites. Yeah, even though I do have a Montrez jersey in the back, I, I got to take Donovan. He's going to be a stud in the NBA for many years. Ben, are you good? I don't know why the – yeah. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We hear right. you the whole time. You're good, Donovan. Uh, You're good with Donovan Mitchell going on, right? Yes. Yes, okay. I am. I, I, don't know, I don't know why the Montrez jersey thing was relevant, but – I don't know. <laughs> we we appreciate the comment, I guess. <laughs> Mel Wagner, Wes Unseld. Wes Unseld. I'm going Wes as well. Frank? Wes Unseld, by the way, on a Kentucky show I was listening to the other day, they were talking about greatest high school basketball players ever. And two of the three guys said Wes Unseld was the greatest high school basketball player from the state of Kentucky. So – Great player at Louisville. Ben, are you okay with that? My guess is Wes. I'll say that. Okay. <laughs> All right, final four. Daryl Griffith, Russ Smith. Griff. Anybody Griff not taking Dr. Duncan Stein? I'll go Russ Smith. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be the only one. Daryl moves on to the That's national fine. championship. Donovan Mitchell, Wes Unseld. Man, this tears me up, but I got to say Wes Unseld. He's a legend. I agree with Joey here. I think it's a tough one, but I'm, I'm going to have to go with, uh, with Wes myself. Frank? Wes, uh, Wes Unseld. Wes is moving on. It doesn't matter what me and Ben say. Well, I was going to say Donovan Mitchell, so. I was too, but it's not, it's not going to matter. All right. Last matchup here, Daryl Griffith, Wes Unseld. Man, I got to say Griff. Um, you know, he's one of the most exciting college basketball players of all time. And I'm glad he was a couple more. Yeah. Todd? Hey, before we move on here real quick, did you all inform Joey? I know he's a Louisville guy, but did you all inform him, inform him that Alec had John Calipari as a 15 seed <laughs> Oh. In the greatest basketball coaches of all time, Joey. He can't be a 15 seed, right? You agree with that? I don't even think he should be ranked. Okay, oh. I'll take that. Good hey, answer. Good answer. <laughs> listen, let me tell you this, Joey. I, I can take him not being ranked over being a 15 seed all day, <laughs> all day long. I remember uh, that next anyway, time, Ty. I'm going. Uh, he well. also. He also had Johnny Cash as a 16 seed in the greatest country uh, stars of all. Johnny well, Cash a 15. Is a 16 seed. Oh, my bad, 15. <laughs> oh, that that that's all right then. He's 15. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm taking Wes. All right, Frank. No, because Alec, that's a tough one. Uh, I'm even I'm not old enough to remember watching Wes Unseld in college. I saw him play when he was in the pros. I think he played for the Washington Bullets, maybe, I think. Bullets. Uh, maybe with Clem, Coach Clem. I think they may have been teammates, if I'm not certain, uh, uh, sure. Uh, they were. They were. Man, is that right? Okay. So, I definitely, though, as great as he is, man, Dr. Duncan Stein, I mean, watching those guys. Obviously, I was at 1980. I'm not very old. Uh, but, man, watching those guys play, they played a different style, a different brand with Coach Crum. They played that press. They made Duncan cool. Uh, that Duncan Cardinal thing was awesome. It's still awesome. Don't tell nobody I said that, Alec, but it is. <laughs> uh, and by the way, I'm going with Daryl Griffith and Alec. Trivia question for you, right in the middle of this. You ready? Oh goodness. Who had the Who had the most dunks in high school basketball? Me or Daryl Griffith? 
It's a trick question. Uh, you, because they didn't have dunking back then. Zero. I can't dunk, and he couldn't dunk because it wasn't legal. <laughs> <laughs> we tied. <laughs> I, you got me. There. That's great. That was great. <laughs> ben. Well, I looked both these guys up, and I was just going to go off who had the shorter shorts. And I got to say, <laughs> I got to say, it's really close. But I'm going to give – God, I don't know. I mean, I mean – I'm, I'm going to go Daryl Griffith because he was a one seed. But they both have some short shorts. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to take Daryl either way. So, Daryl is our best player in UVL basketball history. I bet he's really going to enjoy that if he ever finds out. <laughs> All right, Ben, you want to send us time. out? All right, sure. Well, we appreciate uh, Joey Wagner coming on. It was a lot of fun discussing Absolutely. today. Uh Todd Polson is our other guest uh, that we had on today. Um, <laughs> Thanks for having me. Um, yeah. Yeah, we had a good discussion today. Uh, Louisville MC, Joy Wagner, check them out at, a, at the Yum Center sometime if they ever get to go back there again. Um, but we're going to go ahead and uh, go out now. We're, our next show will be, see, Thursday or Thursday. Friday? I'll, It'll be Thursday. It'll be uh, Thursday. Western. And our. Yeah, you go ahead and tell them, Ben. Well, I was going to say, Scotty, you can tell him. Scotty, you can tell him. Okay. Yeah. Our guest on Thursday will be former Taylor County great Phil Cunningham, current Western Kentucky University assistant coach and former, what, Troy? That's his Troy last head job, right? Troy, yeah. Troy University. Coach Phil Cunningham will be on with us. Yep. Good deal. Can't wait. We're excited to have that. Um, thanks again to Mr. Wagner or Dr. Wagner, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> Um, we'll Thanks, see you guys on Friday. Yep, no problem. See you guys. Thank you, Joey. Appreciate it, man. Yep. Appreciate it.